This video is brought to you by NordVPN. As you probably already know, the UK is in a housing crisis. House prices have been rising faster than wages for at least the past few decades, and houses are now essentially unaffordable for anyone under the age of 40 without family support, which is why a record number of young people now live with their parents. It seems like UK property prices never come down, even though the Bank of England has hiked interest rates 12 successive times to a 15-year high, which should, in theory, make mortgages unaffordable and bring down prices. But they've only come down a couple of percentage points, and, according to Nationwide, are already on their way back up. Despite this, for most of recent history, the housing crisis hasn't really been on the political agenda. Largely because the Conservatives, who've been in power for the past 13 years, have been happy to let house prices rise. If we're being cynical, this is probably because rising house prices advantage homeowners and landlords, who make up the majority of Conservative voters. However, with house prices at unprecedented levels and the rental market in a state of permanent dysfunction, in recent times it seems like housing has finally hit the headlines. On Wednesday, Keir Starmer announced Labour's solution to the housing crisis would be massively increasing house building, and a day earlier, Housing Secretary Michael Gove told the National Conservative Conference that the government was absolutely committed to more houses being built. So in this video, we're going to look at why the UK needs to build more houses, why it hasn't done so previously, and whether Starmer could actually do it. So let's start with a quick overview of the UK's housing crisis. We've actually done a video on this before, so if you want to know more about the UK's housing crisis, go watch that. But the TLDR is that house prices have been rising faster than wages since at least the 90s. Historically, the median house used to cost about four times the median annual salary. However, the average house costs nine times the average salary in the UK, and over 12 times the average salary in London. This is bad news for a few reasons. High house prices exacerbates intergenerational inequality by advantaging wealthy, older homeowners at the expense of the younger generation. They also exacerbate bog-standard wealth inequality by restricting the privilege of home ownership to those with wealthy parents. Today, over half of all first-time buyers under 35 rely on the bank of mum and dad, and this figure rises to something like 75% in London and the South East. It's also just bad news for the economy, because people spend way too much money on housing instead of productive activities. There are lots of contributing factors to the UK's housing crisis. Wage stagnation, the lack of social housing, and Thatcher's infamous right-to-buy scheme have all pushed house prices up ahead of wages. Things haven't been helped by the low interest rates we saw in the 2010s, which made taking out mortgages cheaper, putting even more pressure on the market. However, perhaps the main reason for the UK's housing crisis is a lack of houses. The basic logic of supply and demand will tell you that if house prices are rising fast, i.e. there's a lot of demand, the market will respond by increasing supply, which will bring prices back down to normal levels. In reality, unfortunately, that's not what's happened. In fact, house building has been falling since the 1970s, despite the fact that, at the same time, the UK's population growth has been increasing. A 2017 government white paper puts it simply, the UK needs 225,000 to 275,000 new houses annually, but since the 1970s has only averaged 160,000. A good point of comparison is France, which has experienced similar population growth to the UK since 1970, but built nearly twice as many new houses. In 1970, France had a population of 52 million to the UK's 55 million. By 2019, both countries were at about 67 million, but France had built 16.7 million new homes, increasing its total housing stock by 91%, while the UK had built just 8.9 million new homes, an increase of 46%. So why hasn't the UK built more houses? Well, there are a variety of reasons. The Greenbelt, for example, is supposed to prevent urban sprawl, but it just means that cities can't expand with their population. It's probably no coincidence that the countries which have all seen the steepest increases in house prices, so Canada, Australia, New Zealand and the UK, all use some form of Greenbelt. 
The UK's case-by-case -case planning system, which requires developers to submit individual applications for every potential development, also doesn't help. Most other countries use zonal planning systems, which means developers know in advance whether they can build on their land. The UK system, on the other hand, slows down house building and introduces a load of uncertainty, which discourages investment. However, probably the main reason is bad government policy. Building more houses doesn't pay immediate political dividends. The UK's housing shortage is so bad that it'll take decades for house building to catch up. Instead, the Conservatives' main policy here is the help to buy scheme, which basically involves the government lending cheap money to first-time buyers. By increasing demand without improving supply, help to buy has actually increased prices, making things worse. Johnson tried to reform the planning system in 2020, but gave up on it after opposition from Conservative backbenchers, especially in southern constituencies, who worried that their constituents wouldn't like more houses being built in their area. These people are sometimes known as NIMBYs, which stands for Not In My Backyard. In other words, people who are in favour of more houses in principle, but not when it means more houses in their area. This is why, even if Gove is serious about building more houses, him and Sunak probably won't be able to. The current government is weaker than Johnson's was, and these southern MPs are more worried than ever about upsetting their constituents, given how far behind they are in the polls. This brings us on to the final bit of the video. Can Starmer build more houses, as he recently promised? Well, it slightly depends on the parliamentary arithmetic. With a massive majority, yes, but if it's a narrow majority or a Labour Lib Dem coalition, then it gets a bit trickier. The Lib Dems are generally anti-house building, and some left-leaning Labour MPs have already come out against the plan, which includes reforming the Green Belt. Nonetheless, the fact that he's talking about it is cause for optimism, not least because it's probably one of Labour's most interesting policies yet. A few weeks ago, we were invited to Downing Street, where we were briefed on the government's anti-fraud plan. As part of this, we found out that more younger people have fallen victim to online scams than over 35s. And as our analytics frequently tell us, our audience skews younger, which means that you're likely in this age bracket. So if you want to protect yourself online, you should try NordVPN. NordVPN has a bunch of tools that keep you safe. First, they have a feature called Threat Protection, which protects you from malware, trackers, malicious ads, and phishing scams. But that's not all. NordVPN also has dark web monitoring services, which, even if you somehow do fall victim to online fraud or scams, notifies you if your details end up online, so you can promptly change your passwords and keep yourself protected. And what's more, if technology isn't really your thing, don't worry, NordVPN offers 24-7 customer support and even a 30-day money-back guarantee for all users. So check out our link in the description to get your discount on their two-year plan, plus four extra months on top of that. Thanks for your support.